Hello, and welcome to our second episode of Let's Talk About. Today, we're revisiting Critical Hit Gaming Supplies and going to talk more about the EPAX X133 3D printer and take a look at a comparison print between it and its smaller brother, the EPAX X1. Being that this is the first time we've used the X133, the owners of Critical Hit Gaming Supplies have been learning some new things about it and have been playing around with the settings in order to find out what works best. They've been sharing their progress with me, and I want to make sure we address these things they've discovered so that we can hopefully answer any of your questions about this awesome machine and make it easier for you to get started and avoid any issues with your own X133. So without further ado, let's take a look at some of the things we've learned, and then we'll hop into comparing the prints from the X133 and the X1 to see how each looks. Now in the first episode of Let's Talk About, we looked at the build plate. I mentioned that the top of the plate is angled, and that the purpose of that is to allow any resin on top of the plate to more easily flow off of it and back into the vat, reducing the amount of resin trapped up there. Those angles on top of the build plate do help with this, but not all of it. Some resin still collects and remains on the top edges of the plate, and must be scraped off carefully to get it to fall back into the vat. And due to the large size of the build plate, there's actually enough resin that collects on those top edges to fully build a medium-sized miniature. Additionally, there is some resin that collects as drops on the underside of the build plate. If you are careful when cleaning off the resin from the top of the build plate and removing it, you can tilt the build plate to have any resin on top and clinging to the underside as drops fall back into the vat to reduce any wasting of the resin. One other thing we learned after communicating with the creators of this cool machine is that it is not necessary to remove the film that covers the 4K monochrome screen. They said you can remove it if you desire, but it isn't a necessity. Also, if you look close, you can see that around the edges of the screen, they have actually used electrical tape. Since the screen is so large, there wasn't any pre-cut tape for it. The manufacturers have used standard black electrical tape and have commented that if it is damaged or peeling up, you can simply replace it yourself using the same. Now at the request of some viewers, we did two tests of the LCD screen. The first one is the standard LCD screen test. The second one is a full screen test. In the last video, we started our very first print with the X133, and we came across an issue that is worth noting. First off, let's take a look at the settings we used. For the first print, we were using Cheetobox version 1.5.2. Here you can see the settings we used for that first print. You're currently looking at a video of us using a more updated version, version 1.6.3, which is what we used on subsequent prints. But the settings we are showing here are the same settings we used in version 1.5.2 for the very first print. Also, you can see the miniature here in Cheetah Box that we chose to use for the first print and for our comparison prints between the X133 and the X1. It's an ice giant that was created by Brian Neferate, and if you like his designs, you can find a link to his Kickstarter page in the comments below the video. Now to the issue that we found on the very first print. This picture shows the very first print and you can see there is a thin resin film that was produced around the supports and the miniature. The mini itself actually came out fine once the film and the supports were removed. Additionally, you can see in this picture of the build plate that there was more of this resin film that was created and was stuck to the end fab. So this issue is obviously not ideal and wastes quite a lot of resin. 
We of course wanted to find out more about what caused this as it needed to be resolved. So we reached out to the manufacturers and to the community to see what we could find out about it. After some discussion with the manufacturers and the community, we learned that the issue could possibly be caused by the version of Cheetah Box we were using, which is why we went to version 1.6.3. And to be completely transparent here, we actually installed Cheetah Box version 1.6.3 onto a computer that didn't have the program on it initially to make it easier to get the video we needed for the program. The reason I mention this is that when we created the print file on that computer with that new version 1.6.3 on it, and on our second print, there wasn't any of that resin film issue at all. However, when we updated the main computer that is normally used at Critical Hit Game Supply from version 1.5.2 to version 1.6.3 and did another print, the resin film issue returned. One other recommendation we got from the manufacturers is to use the EPAX Hard Gray Resin, which we have on order. They believe that using that resin will resolve the resin film issue. We are currently using the Soraya Tech Fast Gray Resin, but as soon as the EPAX Hard Gray Resin arrives, we will do some more testing with that to see if the resin film issue gets resolved. We will continue to investigate this issue and do more testing with it, and once we find a definite fix to it, we're going to make sure to include that information in another video. Now there's two last things I want to mention before we look at each of the ice giants that we printed for our print comparison between the X133 and the X1. The first is the front cover of the X133. If you look at the X1, the front glass is too dark to actually see through, but with the X133 it is not, which allows us to look at the progress of our build without opening the front. The second thing is the print time. In order to print the Ice Giant miniature that we chose, the X1 took a little over 10 hours with the settings we showed previously, whereas the X133 only took 4 hours and 45 minutes. Now as we're learning a little bit more and making adjustments to settings in order to find the best ones to use, we already have been able to reduce the print time in the X133 for that very same print down to 3 hours and 45 minutes. We did this by increasing lift speed to 70 and lowering the lift distance to 3. Now we're going to continue to experiment, and once we find the settings that seem to work the best for the X133, we will include that information along with the fix for the resin film issue in another video. Now it's time to finally take a look at the comparison prints between the X133 and the X1. Again, both of these prints were using the Soraya Tech Fast Gray Resin. Here's the print from the X1. It was set for an 8 second exposure time. You can see that it has some gorgeous detail in this print, so props to the designer, uh, Varian Neferate, and props to the X1 uh, and the dialed in settings that we've got for it. Now here's the same miniature printed on the X133. The only difference here is that the exposure time for the X133 was set for 1.3 seconds. We have even attempted a print set for an exposure of 1.1 seconds. That wasn't finished when my time was up, so I don't have video of it yet. But I was informed that upon completion, it still has some overexposure, so we will be testing even lower exposure times on that X133. Now looking at both of these miniatures, I want you to see the detail on them. The miniature on the left is from the X1. The miniature on the right is from the X133. The details on here are amazing. Both prints look very, very good. And even without settings being completely dialed in on the X133, I'd say that I can't tell the difference with my naked eye one from the other. All right, well, that's it for this episode. I hope this was helpful for all of you who are looking at getting an EPAX X133. If you enjoyed this video, you may enjoy the other stuff that we do, like our fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons campaign, or our collaborative map builds in Tailspire. So please give us a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking around for this update. 
We've learned some things in the past month, including some answers to questions that came up about the film issue, among other things, and wanted to make sure we got this information out to all of you. So first off, shipping damage. One thing viewers have noticed and was mentioned in the comments is that there was damage to the X-133 casing. This occurred during shipping. Unfortunately, we were so caught up in the excitement of getting to explore this new printer that we didn't notice the damage until after filming of the previous episodes was complete. But the damage is now noted, and due to the damage and discussing with EPAX, trying to further explore the film issue, EPAX decided that the printer should be returned for evaluation. Upon arrival back at EPAX, it was discovered that there were some internal screws, uh, the light source, and some other components that either had damage or were out of position. Uh, it was actually severe enough that EPAX did not feel it would be safe for the machine to be turned back on. Thus, they gave Critical Hit Gaming Supplies a couple different options to choose from. One, wait for a new X-133 to be built and then shipped to them, which could take several more months. Or, two, have the US-based demo model of the EPAX X10 4K model shipped to Critical Hit Gaming Supplies in less than a week. <laughs> well, not wanting to delay their production, Critical Hit Gaming Supplies decided to go with option 2, and the X10 should arrive within just a couple days of the release of this video. And of course, we will be there to see how the X10 does once it arrives, and we'll post a video about it as soon as we can. So let's get to the film issue. This issue is a pretty important one to go over, as it was causing a lot of wasting of the resin, which I'm sure is pretty important to all of you, as resin isn't cheap. Originally we thought that a possible cause of the film issue was due to the Cheeto Box version being used, but after attempting to replicate the problem while using the latest version of Cheeto Box on the same computer that we used originally and had a successful print on with no film, we discover that that actually doesn't seem to be a factor on whether or not that film issue arises or not. After contacting the two other US-based X133 users, they found this film issue when using fast gray resin. However, when they were using the fast white or the EPAX hard gray resin, the film issue didn't present itself. Also on the film issue, it has been noted that some other users have had the same film issue while using the X10 2K model. Switching to the hard gray resin or the fast white should solve the issue in that model as well, but we'd love to hear from you people who have that model and tried the different resins to see if switching fixed it for you guys. Now let's address the overall print times that we found out about while experimenting over the past month. Earlier we talked about how we were able to decrease the print time for our test print, the large sized Ice Giant miniature, from 4 hours and 35 minutes to 3 hours and 35 minutes, and we did this by decreasing the lift distance in our settings. Now, of note is that this only works when using a smaller area of the build plate for your print. If you're printing multiple items that cover a larger surface area of that build plate, or just a large item that covers more of that surface area, well, the lift distance needs to be higher because the resin that is outside towards the edges of the vat needs to flow back towards the center as we're lifting it up. And we don't get enough time for that resin to backfill in with the shorter lift distance. So EPAX recommends a lift distance of 10, as well as a bottom lift distance of 12 for the EPAX 133. That should take care of prints for larger surface area of the build plate. Now lastly, let's talk once more about the print comparisons. So it's important to note that when printing medium sized creature prints or smaller, the fine details can be much more easily seen. Therefore printings between like smaller machines like the, the X1 uh, and the detail levels you can get there are much more readily apparent. When you're printing large sized creatures, the level of detail isn't as, as easy to see uh, when you're comparing the prints between the different printers. You can see a difference, but it's kind of minor. In fact, you really need to compare them side by side like we did in the video in order to test and see a difference with your naked eye. Personally, I couldn't really see much of a difference even then, but if, especially if you just look at them one at a time, you're not really gonna see a difference. You need to put them side by side. We actually used the most detailed large size miniature print we had to try to accentuate 
the, the details that we could see and get more of a difference. But even then it was very hard. If you're printing larger than large size prints, the details are even less important. You really can't see uh, any difference to the naked eye at that point in time. Now, before we go, here are some photos of prints that the other two US-based X133 users have done. Well, that about does it for the questions we've had thus far. Hopefully this has answered any questions you may have had. If not, please post your questions in the comments section of the video, and we'll do our best to get back to you with answers in the comments section as well. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our future videos, including the next episode of Let's Talk About, where we will look at the Epax X10 4K 3D printer. Later, everyone.